Being a college student is hard enough as it is. Having to worry about income and paying the bills on the side is definitely not fun. Over the years, I've tried various different side hustles, odd jobs, and other things to try and scale up my income as a college student. After spending hours and hours searching through the internet, uh, reading a ton of books, and also following a bunch of mentors, here's how I scaled up my income to over $3,000 a month as a college student. I'm gonna cut straight to the point, the main way you can scale up your income is by leveraging your skills. I know most people assume that being in college means earning minimum wage working at a fast food chain with no tips. However, this doesn't have to be the case. Just by being a college student, you already have a unique set of skills that is desired by others. This obviously varies depending on things like your major, your experience level, and other things. However, I truly do believe that anyone can leverage their skills here. The most common way this is done is by becoming a tutor. There are many ways to become a tutor. You can do it on your own and find clients directly, or you could also partner with the university to become a teaching assistant or a TA. I personally know several people who make pretty good money with this business model, uh, teaching high school juniors or seniors how to uh, ace their ACT, SAT, or an equivalent test. If you don't feel qualified to teach or you're facing imposter syndrome, find something you're better at. Maybe you're not too good at uh, mathematics, uh, but maybe you're good at writing essays. So maybe you could tutor a subject like English. People tend to learn better from someone who's just two steps ahead of them rather than someone who's way ahead. If you've already tried this model with one or two students and you think you can handle more, I recommend you scale your class size to about five to 10 students at a time. The amount of effort needed to teach a couple more students shouldn't be too drastic, but the financial return can be significant. Hopefully, the better you teach, the more organic marketing you'll get through word of mouth, referrals, or testimonials, which will eventually help you grow. There are also various different websites or services online to help you get started. I'll leave a few links down below that I've personally used or my friends have used to help us get started. Again, you don't have to start with super high rates. You can start with just a few classes uh, with a couple clients, maybe for free, just to get some testimonial, proof of concept, and then work from there. Alex Ramosi made a very good video on the topic. I highly recommend you guys check it out. I'll leave a link down below. Obviously, not everyone might want to go down this route so an alternative I recommend that I think is pretty good is getting an internship regardless of your major if your plan is to work a full-time job after graduation an internship can definitely be beneficial or valuable to you most internships start off with a pretty decent pay and can help you increase your skill set to boost your resume when I first started I took on an unpaid internship for a short period of time just so I could absorb as much value as I could because I knew I'd be working with a lot of talented individuals who had a lot of seniority in the field this definitely put me ahead and helped me secure a bunch of internship offers which allowed me to negotiate the things like my benefits, salary, and other things. If I'm being honest, you could easily make over $2,000 a month uh, doing a part-time internship while taking classes. If you're in the tech field, this is actually pretty common. A lot of students tend to extend their internships uh, to a part-time remote role that they can take on uh, at home while comfortably taking their classes uh, in their respective universities or colleges. From a company's perspective, this is obviously beneficial because they're able to offload or delegate tasks or projects to someone who's uh, skillful for pretty cheap labor. I personally recommend you start looking for an internship in your freshman or sophomore year. This will give you a lot of time to uh, advance your skill set and grow with the company, which could mean a full-time job after you graduate. For those of you who are interested in securing an internship, I've personally made several videos talking about what I did uh, when I was looking for my internships and what I would do if I were to start all over again. I'll leave some links down below if you guys are interested. I highly recommend you check those videos out. They might help you a lot uh, when you're looking for your internships. As I've said before, uh, throughout my college career, I've taken on various different internships that have helped me uh, get to where I am today. Uh, right now, I'm a full-time data analyst uh, working at a startup while also being a full-time student in school completing my bachelor's degree. I think that's a pretty cool and unique opportunity and I don't think uh, I would have got here without those experiences. So I highly recommend getting started as soon as you can to build up those experiences and a greater relationship with those companies. Obviously, my salary has grown throughout the years as I progressed my career, but I was making over $3,000 a month consistently for about a year as an intern. Uh, so I decided to uh, share that with you guys. And if you guys want to, you can uh, successfully mimic my footsteps steps and hopefully achieve uh, similar results. All you need to do is put in the hard work and continue growing individually and professionally and I think you would get there in no time. To those of you who are interested in uh, becoming a tutor or getting an internship or maybe both, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below so we can talk about it further. I also did various other things to scale my income. I started off by uh, opening a high yield savings account. To those of you who don't know, uh, regular bank accounts like Chase or Huntington tend to have very low APY rates. Typically, the rates of uh, these accounts are about 0.01% or 0.05%, uh, which would mean you're losing purchasing power every single year to inflation, which is why having a high yield savings account can help you combat that and uh, gain some of that purchasing power back. For example, if you choose to keep your money in a bank like Chase, uh, in 10 years, the amount of things your money can buy will be much less than it can right now. This is because inflation has taken a hit to your purchasing power, uh, which is pretty sad. High yield savings accounts tend to have APY rates ranging from about 35 
25% up to about 5% annually, which is usually enough to combat inflation. Obviously, these past few years, inflation has been pretty crazy, but it's still better to keep your money in an account that grows year over year. Also to clarify, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just sharing my experiences and what has worked for me in hopes that it'll work for you too. I personally use SoFi as my high yield savings account. It's worked for me over the past few years and it might just work for you too. I think the APY rate currently is about 4.5% if you have direct deposit set up to your savings account, which is pretty great considering uh, the other accounts might not be FDIC secured or insured. Again, there are many other alternatives that you guys can use. I'll leave some links down below for you guys to check and compare. Uh, I personally prefer SoFi because I like the user interface and like I said before, it's FDIC insured. There are also usually sign up bonuses that you can get when opening a new bank account uh, the money can range from a couple bucks to a few hundred dollars. Just remember that this money is eligible to be taxed, so whatever reward you get, just keep in mind that you might have to pay some taxes on it later on. However, if you do leverage the system and open new bank accounts every couple months uh, with a direct deposit set up, you'll be surprised how much money you can make. The good news is that bank accounts don't operate on the credit score system, so this won't affect your credit score. However, if you do choose to open a new bank account, there is a similar scoring system, so please do your research and keep that in mind before opening a new account. Speaking of credit cards, another way I leveraged my income was through cashback or credit card reward programs. I want to add a big disclaimer here and emphasize that uh, credit cards are not for everyone. In fact, I think one of the highest debts in America is credit card debt. This is why it's super important to be disciplined and also responsible when using or having a credit card and to pay it back in full and on time every single month. Again, like I said before, credit cards are definitely not for everyone, but if you're responsible enough and have the money to pay back in full and on time every single month, uh, then you might as well get some benefits and cash back uh, when you're spending your money. I've personally gotten thousands and thousands of dollars in terms of points uh, just through cash back and sign up bonuses uh, from leveraging my spending. To be honest, the whole points and miles game can be super addicting and I could spend the entire video talking about this topic just by itself. But all you need to know for the context of this video is that the average American can make over $650 every single year just from credit card reward programs. If you use it correctly, this number could be a lot higher, especially if you get into business credit cards, which to my knowledge does not affect your personal credit score. Again, it is really important for you to do your research before diving into credit cards or credit scores uh, because one wrong move could tarnish your credit score or cause you to go into some serious debt. One of my favorite credit cards getting started was the Discover Student Cashback card. Uh, that one gave you 5% back every single quarter for rotational categories, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. When I signed up, there was also a sign up bonus that gave you 2x your cash back uh, after a year. Then I got into the points and miles game, uh, which led me to getting some Chase credit cards for myself, such as the Chase Freedom Unlimited, the Freedom Flex, the Sapphire Preferred, and more. Again, if you really want to, you could go deep into this rabbit hole and optimize your points to up to about four to 5% uh, return of value uh, when it comes to traveling, or you could just redeem it for cash back at a one-to-one -one ratio. It is also important to know that credit cards are meant to be used as a tool and not to increase your regular spending. If you find yourself doing that with credit cards, then you might just be losing money in the end. I personally recommend tracking your finances through a simple tracking app or using a Google Sheets template that you can pull off the internet. I've been using this template I got from a YouTuber called Daniel Braun uh, for a while now. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to check it out. Another thing I did was I started investing at a very young age. I know investing is often intimidating to a lot of people. In fact, it was pretty intimidating to me when I first got started too. I didn't feel confident enough in my ability to time the market or predict stock prices. I later learned that it doesn't have to be that complicated and you can solidify your chances of making pretty good returns every single year uh, just by investing in stuff like uh, mutual funds, index funds, ETFs, or other similar things. I personally automate my investments by setting up a percentage of my income to automatically go to funds like the S&P 500 every single month. The S&P 500 is basically a fund that tracks the performances of the 500 largest companies listed on the United States Stock Exchange. If you're smart with your money and utilize concepts like the dollar cost average method, uh, you're more likely gonna get a return of about 10% year over year. I personally use Vanguard and Fidelity as my brokerage accounts, uh, but there are many other alternatives that are just as good uh, that I will link down below. On top of that, if you have a full-time job and have a 401k match, I highly recommend you meet that match. This is essentially free money, for lack of a better word, uh, that is being invested on your behalf by your company if you meet the criteria. For most people, it might be a 50% or 100% match at 6% of your annual income, but this varies depending on your company. I learned very quickly that it's best for you to max out all your tax benefited accounts such as your HSA, your 401k, your Roth IRA, etc. Uh, just so your income doesn't get eaten up by taxes. Most people tend to overlook 
with this and miss out on optimizing their tax benefits and investments as best as they can. Again, compounding interest is an amazing thing and I could spend an entire video just talking about that. But to summarize, do some research and find a couple of ETFs or mutual funds that have done historically well throughout your lifetime uh, and consider putting some money aside as an investment every single month. The last and probably the easiest route I took was by applying for scholarships. Most people tend to avoid applying for scholarships, which I think is pretty crazy because there are so many out there that you could get. Again, a scholarship or a grant is not a loan in the sense that you do not have to pay the government or the school back for the money that they give you. According to the Education Data Initiative, around 25% of college students have some sort of scholarship uh, to help them partially pay for school. I think this is pretty crazy and I believe that number should be way higher considering the amount of scholarships that are offered every single year and the eligibility requirements for those scholarships being pretty low. They also listed that the average scholarship amount ranges from about $5,000 to $10,000 a year. Me personally, I know that number could be way higher considering all the scholarships I've applied for and a couple of the grants that me and my friends have gotten, so I think it's very worth for you to check out. If you're an undergraduate student with a decent GPA, I highly recommend you at least apply for the federal Pell Grant. Most times, you will need to write a short essay or complete a form when you're applying for these scholarships, which doesn't take too much time. Overall, there are many ways to scale up your income as a college student. Some just might be easier than others. I know some of the things mentioned in this video might not just work for everyone, but as long as you're improving your skill set and growing as a person, it will pay off eventually. I wanted to make this video to share my experiences and hopefully inspire others to diversify their income too. Like I said before, after my junior year, I was consistently bringing in a good enough amount of income every single month, and that grew a lot recently when I secured my full-time job. I also understand that some of us don't have the time to do odd jobs or intensive labor, so I wanted to talk about some small tips that were easy and also work for me. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.